one of my absolute favorite themes. The humanization of pets is back. For years, this was a powerful theme that could make you big money in the right pet stocks. But in, in the post-COVID era, well, it, it seemed like it was fading away. But in recent months, it's come right back. Pets are being treated like as members of the family again, which brings me to Zoetis, a heavy hitter in the animal health space. If you have animals, you know them. Last Tuesday, Zoetis reported a healthy top and bottom line beat driven by excellent results from the U.S. Com- companion animal business, up 13 percent, double digit year over year. Stock rallied 6 percent in response and has kept climbing over the past week as it should. But does the move have legs? Let's check in with Kristen Peck, the reliable CEO of Zoetis. Ms. Peck, welcome back to Mayor Buddy. It is great to be here, especially after such an outstanding quarter. So thanks for having me. Oh, it was a fantastic quarter and a great set of numbers. And I just, you know, if you could give me a, a sense of how much of what you're riding is the old wave and how much of it's just innovation you guys have that will take you self-help further. Well, I think the quarter and I think our year has really been driven by two things. One, outstanding innovation and bringing, you know, new products to market, but also just incredible execution. If you look at the last 11 years, we've had a compound annual growth rate of 8 percent year in, year out. And that's a healthy, resilient animal health market, as you talk about often, that grows four to six. But it's our innovation that really differentiates us. Now, the innovation is something that I believe the younger, more affluent pet owners really get. They are smart. They can compare. They can go on Google. They go and chat, whatever. They seem to understand the kind of stuff you're doing. Yeah, the majority of pet owners today are young and they are affluent and they see their pets as important members of their family and therefore they want to give them the best care. And that's why we can bring products such as monoclonal antibodies for osteoarthritis pain like Labrella and Silencia yeah. to the market in a self-pay market. And it's been phenomenal. Well, let's talk about that. I mean, Labrella got, a, a, well, I know so I'm a cat person too, but Labrella got a lot more mentions than I ever thought. So why don't you tell people why you waited that in your discussion? It was really important. Yeah, Labrella grew 142% in Q2, so it was a phenomenal performance. And really, it has to do with launching a product that's safe and efficacious, that's really transforming osteoarthritis for dogs across the world. And if you look at, for cat owners, there's Silencia, which grew 60% in the quarter. And we're really proud of these products. And most importantly, the impact they're having on animals and their families who now get to take their dogs for a walk or let them come upstairs. But do you think that the vets all know about these products, or are you supposed to ask for them when you bring the when you bring your animal in. Well, you, of course, should always ask for them, right. but we're really proud um, of the penetration we've been able to get. Oh, good. With okay. It is the fastest penetrated product in the history of Zoetis. It's got an 80% penetration right now in U.S. vet clinics with an 86% reorder rate. So we're really pleased with that in the quarter. Okay, we all use uh, the Simparica Trio. I, mean, I presume it's still doing incredibly well. We got 19% growth. Yep. Well, we, if you look at the Semperica franchise overall, um, we've got about you know, 21, 22 percent growth in the franchise. And that's a product that's been on the market since 2020. So as right. you talk about it, we're able to still deliver more than double digit growth, 22 percent growth in a franchise that's existed for many, many years because it's, you know, chewable, it's wow. easy to use. And we're really continuing to grow that market. And we're really excited to your point on the future growth there. 37% of puppies are going on some Trio. And that's once you start a product, you're likely not going to ever stop that one. No, absolutely not. No, we just had uh, uh, Apoquil on, again, something that I think if you're a pet owner, you're quite familiar with. But uh, there's some potential competitors for the first time. Uh, Lanco's got something. They expect approval in September. I know that this fear of, of, of someone coming in drove the stock down. Overreaction? Um, I think so. As you look at the performance um, in the second quarter, we had 18 percent growth across our Durham franchise, which has been on the market for over 11 years. It was an so on our show. Yeah. And I think we have got two opportunities there. One, we continue to drive, you know, compliance, um, oh. but we also can grow the market. We think there's still 11 million dogs in the U.S. who can still go on um, an important dermatology treatments like Apoquel, Apoquel Chew or Cytopoint, our monoclonal antibody. What are these people doing right now with their tent, with their dogs? Are they just letting them suffer? So 8 million people um, have a dog who has, um, you know, a dermatologic condition, but they're either maybe using shampoos or trying diets well, and things like that. Well, that's what we did before Apple. 3 million of them shampoo. might be on steroids. You're right. And as you look at the side bad. effects there, we really think, you know, going on Apple Call or Cytopoint can make such a difference in their lives. Okay, so um, I want to know a couple things, and this is not in any of the conference calls or anything, but we lost a dog to bloat. Any chance that you might work on something bloat? Um, it's not one of our core areas right now. We're a little more focused I on, know. as you know. Well, so that's a problem. We have niche. We have niche, but we care so much about them. Any yeah. digestive that you're working on? 
Yeah, we're, uh, we're looking at digestive and sort of the broader category of sort of diabetes, obesity, which I know yes. we talk a lot yes. about. Yes. We're no, that's what I space. care about. Yes. So you're working on that. Okay, yes. that's terrific. And then the last thing, can we ever find things that would vaccinate our dog? I, I have a really, I don't want to call him dumb because that'd be mean. His name is Tony No. But he likes <laughs> M&Ms. He likes Raisinets. Now, these kill him. I can't seem to get, is there any way we can immunize these dogs from doing silly things? You know, I think the same way kids will be kids, puppies will be puppies. If I can immunize my puppy Luna for a lot of things, trust me, I would. She gets oh, into I'm, tons of I'm trouble. I'm just putting on my wish list because I respect <laughs> I what you've done. I would say it's not what you feed your dog, but what it feeds itself, it's the problem. <laughs> there you go. Absolutely right. All right, that's Kristen Peck, CEO of Zoetis. This has been a stock we've recommended ever since the spinoff, ZTS, and we feel very strongly now that it's going higher. Man, money's back here for the break.